How's it going everyone? Welcome to Learn with Seb. In this video, I'll show you 17 Canva tips and tricks that you wish you knew earlier. My goal for this video is to show you new techniques that will help you improve your productivity and make it easier for you to create designs. If you come across a tip that you like, that you think will help you make better designs, please hit that like button and feel free to subscribe for more videos. I personally like tip number 13 and 17 in this video as they show how powerful Canva has become and the cool things you can create with it. So, without further ado, here are 17 useful Canva tips and tricks that will hopefully make your life easier and more productive. I'll keep it snappy so feel free to pause and rewind if I go too fast, otherwise let's get straight into it. Tip number 1. Quickly add text using the text shortcut. Simply press T on your keyboard. Adding text is something you do quite often so this shortcut should save you a few clicks. Tip number two, make text bold using control B. Tip three, make it italic using control I. Tip number four, select all. If you need to select all the elements on a page to move them around, simply click control A to select them all. Tip number five, add a drop shadow to text. Click the text, click copy, change the color to gray or black, position it where you want, send it backwards and there you go. A quick drop shadow effect. You can also change the transparency if you wish for a more lighter effect. The problem we have now is that the drop shadow text is behind the original text. This makes it hard to select it. So handy tip six is to select hidden elements. You can do this by command click on a Mac or control click on Windows to select the hidden element. You can then delete it or move it around which leads us to tip seven, moving elements using the arrow keys. One arrow moves it one pixel. Shift plus arrow moves it 10 pixels. Now, if I want to move it, I click and it just moves the top layer. Therefore, tip eight is grouping elements. Highlight both layers, then click group. Now you can move everything as one. You can easily undo it by clicking undo. On to tip 9 and this is a good one, change background colours. If you have a background on your page, click on it and you'll see a colour box in the top menu. If you click this, you can select the colour and the background will change to reflect that colour. This works for graphic backgrounds as well as photos. Tip 10, while we're on the subject of colours, if you use the same colours over and over again, you can save them as brand colours so they instantly become accessible in the colour menu. You can do this by clicking menu, brand kit, adding the colors to your color palette. You can add a couple colors in the free versions and more in the paid version. I will just pick three random colors as an example. I'm not a professional designer as you can see, so these three may not go together, but you get the idea. Now, when you go back to your designs and click on color, the brand colors are now saved for quick access. Tip 11, perfect alignment. Don't waste time freehanding the position of your elements. You can get perfect positioning and alignment by clicking position at the top and selecting the alignment you need. This works for all the elements on the page from text to graphics. As you can see, I can move my fake moon around the page and it positions it touching the sides. I don't want it to touch the side, so I'll just put it in a corner with a bit of margin and I'll leave it there for now. Tip 12, make a copy of your design for different versions. If you want to make a slight change and see what it looks like while keeping the original, then simply click file, make a copy, and then edit the new version while keeping the original. You can rename it to different versions so you can keep track of them. As you can see, I have three versions of this thumbnail which I was working on earlier. Tip 13, get millions of free photos using the inbuilt apps from Pexels and Pixabay. You can find them by clicking more, then click Pexels and Pixabay to add them to your side menu. The icons will now appear here so you can select them. The choice is incredible and you don't have to worry about paid photos coming up. Tip 14, color palette generator. Now that you've got millions of free photos at your disposal, Canva's color palette generator lets you get color schemes that perfectly match your image. 
you'll find it in the resources section of the design school in the footer. As you can see, Canva will automatically select colors from the photo and give you color codes for them. If you don't have a specific image to use and you are not sure which colors to go with, you can discover color palettes from Canva's pre-made selections. Again, you can just copy the color code and paste it in a search box to pull up that color. You can then use it for the text or background. Tip 16, letter frames. This is a cool one. If you type letter frames in the search box, you can find individual letters which you can customize. I'll show you a quick example using my name. Let me just position these neatly. You can do that using the tip I showed you earlier in the video. Now, I like to add scenic photos to the backgrounds of letter frames. Let me use this widescreen one as an example. Just drag it over the letter and it becomes the background of that letter. You will need to use the same photo in each of them and just position them by double clicking inside the letter. The background will now become selectable and you can drag it to the correct position. As you can see, now the word looks almost see-through. Feel free to play around with this and make it better. Last but not least is tip 17, finding gradients using the search. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I love gradients because they just look really nice and not as boring as solid colours. If you just search gradients in the search bar, you can discover a wide range of shapes that you can use in your designs. You can use them as backgrounds and change the colours using the two colour options at the top. I made a quick text background here, but you can use it for anything. You can even add them to the letter frames I showed you in my previous tip. So there you go. Have fun creating designs and uh, feel free to let me know what you think. Hope you found that video useful. As always, thank you for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe for more tech tips, tricks and tutorials and I'll see you in the next one.